So let's start with some theory and then try to create this effect and, and this 3D scene. And now let's find out how to add this effect. First of all, you need to activate depth of field. And there's a very useful setting here. It's called override focus. And what it does is it allows us to change the depth of field without changing the camera positions. Hi there, and welcome to Render Courses. In this tutorial, you learn how to use the depth of field setting in Karana Render. Almost all camera settings in Karana Render are identical to those of a physical camera. So that's why there's a, a direct link between using a regular camera and making 3D Max renders. So let's start with some theory and then try to create this effect and, and this 3D scene. Depth of field is determined by the size of aperture diaphragm. It's the same as in conventional photography. Inside a lens, there are these blade-shaped elements that can change the size of aperture, making it smaller or larger. If the aperture is wide open, there's more light entering the camera, which creates a, a background blur. And as you can see in this image, the larger the aperture, the blurrier is the background. The size of aperture is measured in numbers. The closest, uh, the closer its value is to one, the larger is the aperture. So each number is a ratio of focal length to aperture diameter. The minimum value is one when the aperture uh, has the widest opening. And from one, it can go all the way up. Here you see the smallest aperture size, f22. And we'll be using this setting in 3D Max. So to better understand how the aperture works, think about a human eye. The larger the pupil, the wider the diaphragm. The smaller the pupil, the smaller the diaphragm, which results in less light entering the eye. So pay attention to these paddles or blades that narrow down the aperture. We'll get back to them later. And now let's take a look at, a, at our 3D scene. Here on the table, we see cups, we see some food and other objects. So let's do a close up like the one I have here. First of all, it's important to know that you can't create depth of field if your camera lens is too wide. So avoid using a very wide angle because it will give your image an un unrealistic look. All right, let's create a regular Karana camera. Let's select create, then go to cameras, Karana camera. Let's do it here. This tool can come in very handy when you need to create a bonus angle for your client or to highlight some small details. Okay, so we've created a Karana camera and now let's find out how to add this effect. First of all, you need to activate depth of field. So I press F10 or click the teapot icon with render settings and then select the camera and check enable checkbox to activate depth of field. And now let's set up some camera settings. I go to, uh, I head over to modify tab and let's start with F stop value. So it's the aperture of the lens that I talked about earlier. Let's move down. Here's a depth of field. Check enable uh, checkbox here. Now I press the C key on the keyboard to switch to the current camera and position the camera in such a way that it's looking at our 
objects. Let's rotate it like this and zoom in on, on the object. Move it a bit higher, put the object in the center of the frame. And now let's start the interactive rendering and see what we've got. So I press F10, go to scene, start interactive. Interactive rendering started, but we hardly see any depth of field because the aperture size stands at 16. And like I said earlier, the closer this value is to one, the stronger the blur. So let's lower the aperture value to three and we can instantly see the effect. The objects in the background are starting to get blurrier. So this way we can adjust the blur effect in our render. And also you can, uh, also you need to choose which object you want to view, uh, you want your viewers to focus on. This is where we need to set the position of the camera target. All right, let's see. So if we take the camera target and move it to a different object, that object will come into focus. Now our interactive rendering has changed the viewports. So to prevent this from happening, I select the viewport of our camera and press this lock in render settings. And this way it won't switch modes anymore. On the top view, I'm moving around the target. Let's focus it on this boss, let's say. As you can see, the foreground is now blurry, while the vase is sharp. And this is how you can choose the objects to put into focus. But it's not always what you need, so sometimes you might need, uh, you might need to choose a certain composition at a certain angle and select the objects you want to focus on. And you can do this with Corona Camera as well. So select Corona camera and then go to settings. And there's a very useful setting here. It's called override focus. And what it does is it allows us to change the depth of field without changing the camera position. So if you set this value at say 50 centimeters, the camera will focus on the objects that are 50 centimeters away from the camera. And if, uh, if the value is let's say 150, the camera will focus on more distant objects. This is very convenient. And you can also select a specific object. And I check the object checkbox, click the uh, non button and select the object I want to focus on. Now don't forget to select all in the settings here. We must include geometry as well. And I select the, the pastry and now it's in focus. So. To switch it to a different object, I click this button again, select this distant cup, and voila, the cup is now in focus. So the next thing I'd like to look into is the bokeh effect. When the depth of field is too shallow, there's sometimes this effect caused by bright sources of light. Flares, reflections, and things like that. And we can change this effect as we like. In this particular scene, the bokeh effect is not that strong. There's only subtle flares here and there. Still, I'll show you how to work with the, with the bokeh effect. So remember those aperture blades I was talking about. These blades can determine the shape of flares in the bokeh effect. So in this case, the flares have around seven to eight edges or blades and we can change the number of blades in the render. So uh, I select render setup and then I head over to camera and there's a setting here called shape. And 
the default setting is circular. So I can change that to bladed and select the number of blades in the aperture. The default number is five and I change it to six or seven. You can also rotate the blades if you wanna, if you want your flares to look different. So you can also change this setting to custom and select any black and white map. So I selected a heart shape map. This is how it looks. Let's hit open and see how all the flares have a heart shape. All right, now let's change the depth of field to maximum. Set up F stop to one. Let's see what this will come out, uh, what comes out of it. It's hardly visible, but some flares now have the shape of a heart. All right, so feel free to use this tool and choose custom shapes for your flares for a better effect. All right, so that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. We'll be adding new tutorials on a regular basis. See you in the next video. Bye.